Well, hi there. This is Bob from Bob's EV Garage, and I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are. Today on my bench, I've got the Boss Weld, Weld Like a Boss, Inverter Welder Mini Arc 140. Now, this is a 140 amp inverter welder, so rather than a big iron core transformer, this uses what is essentially a switch mode power supply to produce the welding current. And the advantages of these is that they are more customizable, that is that you can set it for a variety of different modes and adjustable current. Their current is easily adjusted and they're pretty precise about the adjustment as well. And they are also smaller and more efficient as well actually. So those are kind of some of the main benefits. Um, honestly, not a welding expert whatsoever. So like, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Um, but here you are. So this advertises a 10 amp, 240 volt plug, plate thickness up to six mils of mild steel. So thin, uh, electrode size up to 3.2 mils. So, you know, these actually some are, these are some of the larger electrodes. Um, Again, not a welding expert, but I know there's a lot smaller ones, so that's that. Uh, it can do stainless steel, mild, st mild steel, and cast iron, and it can also TIG weld if you get the optional accessories, which I did not buy. <laughs> uh, I looked into it. it the, the TIG welding uh, tip is 200 bucks, and um, I bought this for 50 bucks on sale at Bunnings, so... You know, <laughs> I'm not going to splurge that. I might get a cheap one off eBay someday to try and hook up and see if it works. But nah, not going to afford that. Either way, looking around, our boxing, we have our package, our specs here. Uh, I'll take a picture of that and then, you know, you can look at that in your own time. Uh, but yeah, simple box. Let's get into it and have a look. I've got Stanley, the box cutter here. So let's have a look. Being careful not to scratch any of our beautiful yellow paint. There we go. Wow, this thing is small. Dude! <laughs> it's tiny! <laughs> wow! Okay, so we've got a little manual here. We'll go through that. Not. Um, we've got our cables. This is our weld clamp. So this is the electrode clamp. We put our electrode in here and weld with it and it's got the mini welding um, terminal we've got our grounding clamp which attaches to our workpiece and that just transfers the current back from the welding spot to the inverter and it looks like these are um, 12 mil squared cable I reckon it's probably copper and uh, Two and a half meters there, and three meters here. So relatively long cables. The star of the show though, is this tiny, tiny little thing. What on earth? The scale, this is my hand. Guys, what is inside this magical beast? That's, that's what we do on this channel, so uh, we'll find out in due course. I should note, there is a little strap here for carrying it. <laughs> what? Oh, I can't get over that. I've had welders that are like 80 amps or 100 amps that are much bigger than this. So I'm very curious to see how they packed all of that current into such a small size. And for anyone who is experienced with welders, you'll know it's because the duty cycle is limited. This one can only run at 15% duty cycle at 140 amps, which means that 15% of every 10 minutes is used in welding and the other 85% has to be off or with the fan running to keep it at a, at a safe temperature. So here's our units, just simple screws. I'm just going to check to make sure there's like no void warranty sticker or anything. Um, I think we're good. So before we power it on and everything, let's take it apart. Box 
thing is complete. Oh, it's it's got quite a strong smell, guys. I will tell you that. Um, ooh, it smells very strongly like plastic and brand new parts. Um, don't know whether that's good or bad, but it is what it is. Um, so, looking here, I can see we've got our main input switch it's a chunky switch and it operates on both the live and neutral so I mean that's good it means that you won't have any connection whatsoever to the power lines when this is off that's valuable um, we've got you know very stock standard AC filtering here we've got an inductor uh, some coupling capacitors which remove ripple or a small portion of the ripple that goes back onto the line because of the nature of this power supply. Um, we've got an inrush limiting NTC resistor there uh, with a relay that bypasses it once you know it's charged the capacitors. Speaking of the capacitors, we've got HP branded 470 microfarad 400 volt capacitors there and two of those. So in total we'll have um, 900 microfarads of capacitance. Um, I don't know how that really compares to other welding inverters, um, but obviously this is so small that they probably couldn't actually pack any more in if they tried. So over this side, I'm seeing an IGBT just here. So on the box it says IGBT technology, and that's pretty much just a special type of transistor. Um, they're really good with high voltage, high current. Um, so that's that, obviously. This is a really high current device. The maximum input at 240 volts is 25 amps, and that's that's a bit big for a MOSFET to carry, so they use IG, IGBTs here. We've got our bridge rectifier um, here, which just takes our AC input, switches it into DC, which is stored in the capacitors. Uh, that's mounted on this heatsink. This will be our other IGBT. Uh, there's generally two of them, and that just means they can use a more efficient topology when they're switching for the transformer. So instead of just switching DC in one direction through the transformer, they can switch back and forth, which makes more use of the windings. So there you go. Again, I'm not super experienced with transformers either. I just know that's kind of how the topology works. And we've got our rectifying stage here. So this is our transformer. This takes our, a, uh, our AC from the IGBTs and it steps it down to a lower welding voltage. Uh, the open circuit voltage here is 68 volts. So quite a bit of a step down from the 300 and something volts DC stored in the main capacitors. And we've got a rectifier here, as I said, which is a combination of four diodes by the look of it. So you can see there's one set, one set, one set, one set. And each each package, so let me get an angle here. Maybe, maybe, let's see if I can get to focus right there. No, sorry. Uh, let me get the light on. We'll see if that works. Can you see it? see it now okay so you'll have to take my word for it there is four diode packages each has two diodes in it so that's a combination of eight in total diodes that um, that rectify the voltage into DC for the output so just looking here yeah so we see our main bus bar for the DC is just a copper tab that's been screwed on to the heatsink of the rectifier stage and that carries our power through to the positive side. Our negative terminal is attached to the uh, circuit board and that is coming from the output of the transformer. So one of the outputs goes straight to the negative, the other output goes through the positive rectification stage and then out to the positive. Um, sorry if that doesn't make sense, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, I can see we have a current sense uh, transformer here. So what this does is it measures um, the current flowing through our AC cable by the look of it. So the one that transfers, oh no, sorry, high voltage DC. 
this is the cable that uh, goes from like our ca capacitors to the IGBTs, or maybe vice versa, from the IGBTs to the transformer. And the magnetic field produced by the alternating current is picked up in this little iron core transformer here, and then a second set of windings on that same iron core detects when there is current flowing and if so, how much current, which feeds back to our little control circuit just here. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a look at which circuit specifically it is, but uh, I can tell you from looking at it, it's a microcontroller. Uh, it's not like a simple TL494 or something like that, not so easily customizable. But it does make sense because this doesn't just do, like it's not just a power supply, it does TIG, MMA and whatever the heck that is, VRD welding. Um, yeah, not sure about that, I'll have to maybe actually look into it. Uh, but yeah, so microcontroller has to do all of the control for this because it has to have output a variety of waveforms. Um, let's see, is there anything else here? No, that's pretty much it. So I'll just show you on the front. We got our little infinitely variable um, potentiometer on the front, which selects the current. We've got a button which cycles through the different modes and a display which just shows the specific current output. Let's put it back together and actually do some welding to test out the current. The rated output current is in fact what it produces. I think you saw on the meter, I think the maximum we got up to was 142 amps or something. But well, that's plus or minus 2 amps because that meter is, this meter here is super sketchy. But it performs as expected. Um, the arc was easy to maintain, especially at lower currents. At the really high current, it popped the breaker. So it's obviously drawing more than the 10 amps, which is the limit for the, the breaker on the power boards. Um, but yeah, it works well. Uh, it was a little bit challenging to start the arc sometimes, but I think that's more to do, to do with my skill level rather than specifically the welder. I know some welders actually have a high voltage starter, which introduces a little bit of high frequency super high voltage, which is able to jump a small gap, 
rather than this where you actually kind of have to touch it to the material so there's a chance of it sticking but if you have that small gap then there's no sticking it just starts the arc either way this doesn't have that it's a cheap you know it's kind of the cheapest welder i could possibly get that as an inverter welder it's actually cheaper when i bought it on sale for half price it was cheaper than any one i could get on ebay and this was coming from bunnings so that says something and i think boss welds an okay brand honestly i haven't really researched it but looking at the internal construction and how well it was built i'm fine with it um yeah so there you go uh, make of it what you like i'm not a skilled welder but it made doing a couple seams or whatever it is, uh, lines of welding. It wasn't too bad, you can have a look at that here. I did one line all the way across there. Oh wait, hold on, this side. All the way across here. I blew this hole straight through the metal on, <laughs> on the 140 amp setting, as expected. Um, so yeah, that's only for a thicker metal, but it worked fine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. Bless you and I will see you next time.